Lisa Foundation utilizes a comprehensive set of modeling tools for the simple creation of a variety of foundation elements. Model foundation elements such as grade beams, retaining walls, spread and combined footings, piles, and mat slabs. In this video, I'm going to show you how to analyze and design retaining walls in Risa Foundation. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to modify my drawing grid because I'm going to design a basement wall. This partial basement structure will have a length of about 80 feet. So I want to include the full length of my wall on the drawing grid. To modify my grid, I can just go to the Drawing Tools tab here and choose Drawing Grid. And I'm just going to change this to be 80 feet. So to start drawing my walls, I can click on the Home tab and find the wall footing icon under Draw Elements. Once the tool activates, you can see in our Properties window here, there are some preloaded wall properties. However, today I'm going to add an additional wall footing definition. So to do that, I can press on the triple dots here and it's going to take me to this wall footing definition editor window. I really like this window because it helps me visually understand the input references for the different variables for my wall footing. For example, my soil height is referenced in this diagram here at the right. If I come into my wall footing definition spreadsheet, I do have the option to add an additional wall footing definition through the spreadsheet as well. Just by entering enter on the last row, I can add a new wall footing definition. If we call it basement wall, and I can change the type either concrete or masonry, and I could input all of these geometry here. The geometry, soil, and reinforcement definitions are all nicely organized into separate spreadsheet tabs across the top here. Also within this spreadsheet, if I want to just click these triple dots next to the label, I'll also be presented with that same visual dialog window. So this dialog looks a little bit different because it's showing me a strip footing. So Risa Foundation, you do have the option between a retaining wall and a strip footing. The main difference between the two is that the retaining wall will consider the lateral earth pressure, whereas the strip footing is looking at just a gravity analysis. So for this basement wall, I'm going to want to consider those lateral earth pressures. So I'll go ahead and choose from this drop down menu of wall type to be a retaining wall. Up here across the top is all of our retaining wall properties, nicely organized into tabs. So here on this general slash geometry tab, I have the option to specify the wall thickness of 18 inches. Since this basement wall is supported at the top by the floor diaphragm above, I'm going to go ahead and say that this is propped. And we'll say that this wall is about 18 feet tall and the soil will come up to about 17 feet. Maybe we've got a sidewalk pavement on the exterior that we need to account for. So we'll leave the water height or saturated soil height the same. We'll also have the option to specify whether or not the footing is poured congruently with the wall or two separate pours. We also have the option to specify whether or not that interface between the footing and the wall is rough or smooth. We can specify our toe lengths and our heel length. I'm going to set the toe at 3 and our heel length to 4. I also have the option here to specify the concrete material or masonry wall, but in this instance I'm going to use a concrete and I'm going to change the wall construction material to normal weight and 4000 for the concrete. If I need another concrete material, I can click the triple dots here to add or edit existing concrete material. Creating a new material will open a similar window where we can enter in the concrete material properties and save. I'm going to use one of my default materials, so I'll click cancel. I'll want to change the footing as well. Now that I have this general material inputted, 
I can come to the Soil tab in my Wall Footing Definition Editor, and here I'll input all of the soil variables. So these variables are what you'll obtain from your geotechnical report. We have the option here to choose the ranking or the Coulomb method. I'm going to keep the ranking method since we're not going to consider friction. In this analysis here, we can specify the soil toe depth. You'll notice that we've got three different soil inputs here. And so the program can analyze our lateral earth pressure coefficients for three different soil types. The soil that is at the toe of the retaining wall, the soil that is at the heel of the retaining wall, and then also that saturated soil at the heel of the retaining wall. I'm going to leave the K values blank because the program will automatically calculate those. However, you do have the option to input those values if you know them already as well. So for the soil densities and the internal friction angles, I'm going to leave all those as the program defaults. I will change my surcharge load to 100 PSF. The last two tabs are going to be our reinforcement detailing for both the wall and then also the footing design. Again, we have a nice reference diagram here on the right for the parameters. So I've got the option here to specify if I want a single layer or each face for my retaining wall. I can specify if I want the outer bars to be vertical or horizontal. In this case, since my wall is spanning vertically, I'm going to want to keep those outer bars to be vertical and so then the soil side of my wall cover will be 3 inches. The program is going to optimize my vertical bar spacing here based on these in the minimum and maximum values that I input for this. Now in this last tab here, I have the option to specify the reinforcement for the footing. I also have the option of each face or single layer. I can specify that longitudinal bar to be 12 inches. We can specify our bottom bar spacing and top bar, and that will be optimized based on our minimum, maximum spacing. I'm going to increase that to number 8. So I was able to input all those variables without having to do it through the spreadsheet. But if you prefer the spreadsheet, I'll come back here and you can see all of the wall footing definitions we just entered in their corresponding cells. So you could type or copy and paste your values into these cells also. So I can come back to the model view to draw my wall footing. And I can choose from this drop down menu, basement wall from what we just created. I can just draw based off that drawing grid that I edited earlier. So now we have this plan view of our retaining wall. We can switch into our isometric view to see the actual three dimensions of the retaining wall. We can also turn on its render view up here. The soil definition spreadsheet is where the bearing of the retaining wall at the footing will be considered. And so right now we have a default soil definition. We've got a subgrade modulus of 100, an allowable bearing of 3. So I'm going to actually switch this to 4 for my specific project. I can come into my load combinations and we can see that we've got dead load and live load and hydrostatic load already considered. So we've already got the hydrostatic loading considered in our model here and that was through the lateral earth pressures that we specified in our retaining wall editor. Now let's apply some dead and live loads so to do that I'm going to use our line or distributed load tool. So we'll draw in the line loads, and this line load is going to be concentric. You do have the option here to specify if you wanted to have a moment about the z-axis also. I'm going to choose a 0.1 kips per linear foot dead load, and then I'm just going to apply the line load by clicking the two nodes at the base of the wall, and you'll see that it automatically populates that load at the top. Now I'm going to go ahead and apply my live load of 0.5 kips per foot. So we'll go ahead and run the analysis of this retaining wall. You can review all of the results for your retaining wall through the results spreadsheets here on the right hand side. But if you are more of a visual person, you can view the detail reports. To view, click our detail report tool and then click along the base of the wall here. First view the introductory loading graphic of the retaining wall. Then at the bottom, Risa Foundation gives you a rebar diagram with all of the details you need here to construct your wall. It's giving me the reinforcement spacing. It's indicating that it's propped. 
and all of the spacing definitions are all there. So that's a great image you could pass off to the draftsman and they could go ahead and start drafting. Up here choose which load combination you wish to view. I really like this loading diagram as well. This really shows me the actual lateral earth pressures that were calculated as well as the bearing pressures. So that shows that I've got full contact bearing by the minimum and maximum bearing values and even the passive pressures. We can keep scrolling and get a nice summary of our input parameters and material properties here. As I keep scrolling down, we've got the footing design and it gives us the soil bearing check. But it looks like here the program is actually not checking our overturning or sliding and that's due to the fact that the wall panel is propped and it gives you that information here. At this point, we've completed the design and analysis of our retaining wall. For more information on RISA Foundation or other RISA topics, please visit our website, risa.com.